Hi everyone. So it's been a while since I uh, posted a video about the SDRs and VORs or VORs and SDRs project. And um, I actually got an exciting one, but I honestly don't really know how to present it. The problem is that it's all software. So I've been able to uh, completely implement the uh, program that takes the track that I recorded from the um, onboard avionics and it also takes the VOR um, radio data that I collected using the SDRs and shows them together and animates it. And <clears throat> so anyways, I've I've done all that and I'm going to go ahead and show you that video. It's sped up at least 2x. There's a couple of things I want to point out with it. Okay, so this is the project in Xcode, and I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And um, it's a pretty simple app. On the left there, I've got the um, map kit view. And um, <clears throat> you can go through here and select a track file. And this is a CSV file put out by a Garmin G1000, but it will also read files from a G300. And um, so that's the track that we took. And then now we can add the VOR. Um, this is the processed VOR data from GNU Radio. And so there's the Corvallis process data. And I've got the offset of, you know, 2250 seconds and 2000 um, samples a second. And now I'm adding the Eugene data. And then on the bottom one there, I select what VOR that it matches. And that actually, um, you can see on the right, it says the radial zero and power zero. <clears throat> so I have a database of VORs. And so I use the uh, radial, which is the angle from the VOR to the vehicle, from the database and draw a line. So I scoot ahead to where I actually have data um, which is over here by Eddyville and so now you can see these blue lines appearing and that's the actual um, observed VOR data <laughs> and uh, when it's too low of an amplitude you could see there they were all just lines off into space and that's because they were not a number and um, for whatever reason, v, uh, GNU Radio was spitting out NANs during those samples. So now you can see we're moving along um, between Eddyville and Toledo there. And the ON, uh, ONP, which is the Newport VOR, is like bang on. It's right pointed at the vehicle. Um, and the Eugene actually uh, signal is, is right up there too. And Corvallis is off by a little bit. And it's also interesting uh, for me to see that the angle just wavers ever so slightly back and forth um, on these signals. Um, I've got a lot of low-pass filtering going on. I think that I'm filtering these signals to be um, one-tenth of a hertz, hertz or um, 100 millihertz is the cutoff frequency that I've uh, low-pass filtered these signals. So um, there's a rather large hill um, in the center here. So if you see the line from Eugene, before it hits, um, <clears throat> well, actually, after it hits LC there, in that green shaded uh, Drift Creek Wilderness area, there's a large hill called Mary's Peak. And so that ends up causing um, the signal to drop out occasionally between the Eugene and the Corvallis VOR. So at this point the um, Eugene signal has dropped out completely and we're only getting the Newport and Corvallis and it's you know the Eugene does kind of pop in and out every once in a while but you can see that you know if we had absolute perfect signals from two of these stations it would have been enough to get kind of a rough location but, because we don't know exactly 
how how good these signals are um and they waver you know back and forth by a degree or two we lose some of that precision and um by the way a degree or two of loss in precision is totally within normal bounds for VORs okay so at this point we're quite near Newport and um I end up having to transmit to air traffic control at some point. <clears throat> and when that happens, you can see that the Corvallis VOR goes kind of haywire. And also, um, at this point, Corvallis is getting behind that Mary's Peak Hill that I mentioned before, so its signal um, kind of takes a takes a major deviation um, and at this point we're quite near the Newport VOR and it's sort of overwhelming uh, the system as a whole and remember that offset number I showed that you could see when um, I was entering the VOR data and so what I ended up having to do to come up with that number because I didn't know how many seconds into the flight I started the receiver I used this moment here right where I crossed the Newport um, VOR. So you can see that um, I set it so that the plane sweeps by the Newport VOR about the same time that the Newport signal sweeps around. So this is the moment that I chose to set that offset. Um, also at this point, by being so close to the VOR and being, I think I was 5,500 feet at this point, or uh, probably 6,500 feet at this point, climbing to 7,500. I was right on top of the antenna, and so the directionality that is the way VORs work is sort of hampered by the fact that we're right on top of it. Um, also, you know, strangely, on the back side of this course, <clears throat> the signals don't work nearly as well as I was headed towards Newport. Um, on the right, on the uh, observed table, you can see that the power levels for all three VORs is really low. Um, I think I set a threshold of 0.1 on this the power field to even draw a line. Um, and none of them are anywhere near that threshold. And I chose that threshold because that's sort of the level where the signals were mostly stable. So if we scoot forward a bit, we can see that uh, Newport comes back, and then Corvallis and Eugene come back, but they um, have a bit less precision than they did on the other direction. But after a bit, um, they do come together and end up, you know, converging on a decent um, solution, navigation solution. So I'm just going to fast forward here through the rest of the um, animation and let you watch it. And then we can run it. Um, I'm going to run it one more time in super fast motion so you can kind of see at a glance how the whole thing went. I'm very happy with this result. This is really exciting to me. Um, I've got one more video planned for this series, and that one is way more exciting than um, these ones, and I'm really, really stoked. I, I feel like I want to keep it a secret until it, until it happens, um, but I guess I should say that it's not done. We're not done. This is getting close to being uh, a finished exploration of VORs and SDRs, but I've got one more exciting video to produce. So, um, if you have any questions about the software, I'm considering open sourcing it, but I don't know if that's going to be useful in any way. Um, it's all written in Swift, so unless you're using a Mac, it's not going to be helpful to you. But if you're interested in seeing how to do some basic signal processing, map kit, um, UI, uh, animation, all that stuff using Swift, then um, it might be an interesting thing. So if you're interested in that, you know, drop me a line in the comments or on Twitter, um, and I'll maybe clean it up a bit. 
This is definitely not the kind of code that I would write at work by any stretch. This is very much hobby, um, personal project level code. Um, so, so with that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, make sure you let me know if you have any further questions or have anything else to say. And um, thanks again. Bye.